اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ اول ہی بلا اول انکان قبل و آخر ہی بلا آخر یقون و بعدہ الدی قصورت ان رویت ہی ابصار الناظرین و اجزت انات ہی اوہام الواصفین تم صلاۃ وسلام علیہ سیدنا و نبینا حبیب اللہ رب العالمین اب القاسم المصطفیٰ محمد اللہ وسلم والح طیبین الطاہرین الباسمین المظلومین ولعانۃ الدائم علیٰ ادا مجمعین من علان علا قیام یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اینڈ ویلکم ٹو کوشچن ٹائم گریٹنگز اینڈ فیلیسٹیشنز اپون دی برتھ آف امام حسن الاسکری علیہ السلام ٹو آل آف ویورس ٹو آل دی لورز آف اہل بیت علیہ السلام میں اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ شاو اسپیشل بلیسنگز آن دس ڈے فار آل آف اس اینڈ آل آف اوا مرحومین The 11th Imam, uh, who was an Imam for about six years only, meaning that his period of Imamat was six years only. And before he became an Imam, he was about 22 years. So therefore, it means that his life was about 27, a bit or maybe 28 years old. So this Imam was Shaheed in a very young age, which is 28. And this six year of the Imamat of his was majority of the time spent in prisons. Not only his, uh, uh, his life of Imamat, but even all of his life was in, under heavy surveillance, in prisons, from one prison to the other. Imagine that a person who is raised in a house and at the same time he is buried in that very house itself, meaning that who is raised in a prison and raised in and, and buried in the prison, not only him, but also his father. So there are two Imams buried there as, your, as you know in Samira. So therefore, uh, the Imamat of Imam Hassan Askari salam, was six years old and he was born to the mother known as Sosan. She was well known for her piety. Imam Hadi alayhi salam also and Imam Jawad alayhi salam also uh, talks very high in regards to her. Uh, it's very unknown in, uh, in regards to her roots that where she was originally from, from. However, it's been known that she was brought as a slave in the time of Bani Abbas and she was sold in Medina. Uh, and that's where, you know, basically the Aqd of Imam Hadi alayhi salam and Sosan took place. And uh, it's been well known that she was apparently was a uh, daughter of some sort of a king, you know, some sort of a king in some, you know, uh, extended sort of uh, vicinity of the Islamic empire of that time. As you know that during the time of Bani Abbas, uh, people will, uh, you know, uh, will, will go around and conquer land and get slaves and expand. Islam was expanding in that fashion. And they will bring slaves and they will sell slaves in Medina in different parts of the Islamic world where the slave trade, where the slaves were born and sold at that time. Uh, however, mind you that, you know, the, the, uh, this is not the topic to discuss uh, at the moment, but Islam was the first one to initiate the, f uh, uh, the deterioration of the Um, uh, of the slavery uh, from the beginning, you know, uh, and uh, uh, if you look at it during the time of the Prophet, uh, how the Prophet brought rules and regulations in regards to slave and at the same time promoted uh, that freeing a slave is a great honor and one would have great rewards. Uh, on the other hand, you would find other Uh, institutions uh, where slavery was well accepted even till the modern era. Uh, the American slave trade is the most famous of, the, of all where how they used to uh, you know, embark to Africa and buy human beings and bring them in the worst of conditions and bring them and sell them and keep them in the worst of condition. Even after being such an advanced civilization, we are talking about you know, Abraham Lincoln's time and after. And even today, we would find that unfortunately, uh, this, uh, this uh, phenomena or this reality 
of slave trade till ex still exist. But when we look at the Islamic sort of uh, approach in regards to slavery, it was always something that have shunned, that have tried means and ways to uh, marginalize slavery and uh, because see there are certain things which are part and parcel of the society and which requires that to be curt uh, you know gra which, which requires that they should be uh, uh, you know curtail in a in a in a wise way they should be taken care in a wise way uh, in a gradual way like for example drinking alcohol was part and parcel of the Arab Arabs of that time and then Islam gradually brought the rulings against alcohol it did not come in one go and it is it's haram right so it gradually and gradually brought these sort of you know um, uh, prohibition of alcohol that one should not drink when while is praying and so on and so forth because you know it's it seems that it was it was well accepted by the Arabs of that time Anyway, so now in regards to the slavery as well, slavery is part and parcel of human society. Prostitution is the same, is part and parcel of any society. You know, you will not find a society, a community, a country, uh, a group uh, living uh, in, in, in the tribal sort of land uh, that there is no slavery, that there is no prostitution that there is no so there are certain ills of the society that is part and parcel of the society and what is requires is that this should be marginalized this should be balanced this should be uh, you know uh, gradually and gradually uh, we have to take them out of the society in a wise way and that's what Islam did when it comes to the uh, issue of slavery it kind of you know promoted the reward of freeing a slave that if somebody breaks a fast he must you know free a slave if somebody goes to Hajj you know this on in different ways for example freeing a slave was considered to be very much appreciated liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Prophet by the Sharia and at the same time the rules and regulations that were brought that how they should be treated and at the same time the sira meaning that the way how the Ahl Bayt dealt with them Hazrat Fizza for example one day she will work one day Hazrat Fatima alayha, will work you know so they set examples by which this ill of the society which is slavery should be you know basically marginalize right now Hazrat Sosan Salamullah Alaiha she was brought to Medina and she was sold there and she was well known and famous for her purity for her piety well respected by the Imams really these mothers of the Imams have a great uh, uh, great sort of service to Islam they have you know we are indebted to the, these mothers we salute to the mothers of the Imams unfortunately very less is discussed about them who they were where they were from and how they carried themselves they were the mothers of the Imams so therefore you know one have to really dedicate you know a program where one re could really discuss the personalities of these great uh, stars of these great unique individuals uh, that we had. Now, Imam Hassan Askari salam, went through a lot of pressure, turmoil, surveillance. Now, I would like to uh, uh, point out to the uh, socio political um, you know, setup of that time because what we have today is an extension of the same socio-political socio thought uh, and it is very much related to because after Imam Hassan Askari salam, is the 12th Imam, Imam Al-Asr who is alive and who, well, who went in occultation. Now obviously the Imam Hassan Askari salam, have to prepare the future Ummah for this minor and major occultation. So Imam in the short life have already provided that, have done that and we want to see that how this happened. Now first of all the amount of pressure 
that was put on Imam Hassan al-Askari where the Imam he himself says that the Shias in his time and he himself have faced a lot of pressure from outside to the extent that the Imam says that the Shias were doubting in the presence or in the Imam himself that is really Imam Hassan Askari Imam or not. There were people in the Shia world, in the Muslim world that they were doubting is Imam Hassan Askari is the Imam himself. They know that there is you know Hassan Ibn Ali you know son of Imam Al Hadi alayhi salam, Ali Al Hadi alayhi salam whose, has, whose name is Hassan whether he is the Imam or not they were doubting in the Imamat of the Imam Hassan Askari himself. Now let me tell you an incident which happened and that was people used to come to uh, you know Samera from different places to really see the Imam just to take a look at the Imam by her, their own eyes that Imam is there and he is the Imam and he proves himself to be the Imam to us. You know such an important principle of Deen which is Imamat uh, was coming under fire, was coming under doubt, was coming under suspicion by the pressures that was there from outside. Now I will mention you this story of this young lad and then I will tell you that how these pressure and how this suspicion and how this propagation against the Imamat and the Imams were happening and at the same time I will also tell you that why this suspicion, these doubts, this pressure was being played upon the Imams and the Shias of that time. Now this young lad who traveled from very far, he comes to just see the Imam because Imam was in prison, was in high house, house arrest and Imam was asked to visit the Khalifa of that time every two days a week you know as you know, you know, uh, attending to this, you know, to the service to be there to show his presence that he's there. So whenever he used to come outside the house, because Shiaism have really expanded and extended. Shiaism of at that time, the Shia Islam at that time had some sort of strong form being given to them compared to the previous eras. You know, the presence of the Shias of that time have 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 become like a proper school of thought as such you know people were practicing people were you know were, were openly uh, expressing they that they are the Shias for example because this happened at the time of Mamun Rashid where Mamun Rashid officially invited Imam Reza Ali Salam and appointed him as the vicegerent as the uh, you know next Khalifa after Mamun Rashid he was forced obviously to accept the Wali Ahadi you know to be the vicegerent after uh, you know uh, to be uh, the Khalifa after Mamun to become the vicegerent. He was forced for it. He never wanted it but however he was forced for it. That is a different political reasons behind it. Islamic reasons which we can discuss later on when we are talking about Imam Rada alayhi salam. But what I am trying to say here is that when the Khalifa of the time who is known to be Alim Ali Bani Abbas. He was known as the scholar, as the Alim of Bani Abbas. You know, if you look at even today in the encyclopedias of Islam, the flourishing period of the Islamic era is known to be the era of Mamur Rashid. You will find the name of Mamur Rashid in all of the Orientalist uh, recordings and also in the encyclopedias of Islam and known to be the very intelligent famous king of Bani Abbas right so he was known as the scholar as the Alim and Bani Abbas as well right now Imam Rada is also known as at the same time Alim, Alim Muhammad right like we said we'll discuss about Imam Rada perhaps some other time so now what I'm trying to point out here is that Mamur Rashid who is the you know the very one of the famous renowned 
Khalifa, after defeating, you know, his brother, you know, because Harun have two brothers, you know, Mamur Rashid, and also there was another uh, brother uh, who, who were fighting with each other. Finally, Mamun Rashid, uh, Harun Rashid, uh, Mamun Rashid become victorious. Amin was the other brother. Uh, finally, Mamun Rashid become victorious, and the Islamic Empire has expanded to the to the to the maximum capacity that it could have expanded. Now here you have a Khalifa of the time who is inviting the Imam and officially appointing him as a vicegerent. So this is a very political move. This is a move in which we find that Imam was given a position because they have recognized this is the followers of the Imam officially in the government. Previously, they were persecuted. Previously, they were known as Rafidi. Previously, they were disliked. They were in Taqiyya. They were, you know, all sorts of pressure were there. But from the time of Imam Rada alayhi salam, officially they were accepted as, uh, as, as, uh, as, 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 as a school of thought or as a group or as a community because Imam Rada alayhi salam was officially announced as a vicegerent in the hukumat of Mamur Rashid. Now, here the reason was because of the amount of contributions of the Imam, and with this contribution comes the following that they have. Bani Umayyah have tried to their maximum capacity to do that. When Harun Rashid comes to power, he tries to maximally persecute. You know, people think that, you know, because he came to power by the, by the uh, defeat of the Bani Umayyah under the pretext of the Shahadat of Imam Hussain al-Islam, that the pressures were there. Now, see here what happens is that when, when Harun Rashid comes to power, he also puts pressure on the Shias after taking the power, but still he couldn't. So, the amount of contribution of the Imams, the knowledge, and at the same time, the amount of followers were increasing. So eventually they have to try a different way to really calm, to sort of, uh, you know, put sort of politically put pressure in a way uh, by officially recognizing them at the same time. So Mahmoud Rashid tried to do that and he couldn't even, uh, you know, uh, properly carry this political sort of recognition and eventually kill the Imam. Eventually Imam was Shaheed, Imam Rada alayhi salam. So therefore, officially they were recognized and right after the Imam Rada alayhi salam, you would find a different type of pressure building upon the Imams. After Imam Rada alayhi salam, all of the Imams, they died in a very young age compared to the previous Imams. And after Imam Rada alayhi salam, they were persecuted in a very, uh, you know, sophisticated manner with sort of spies living with the Imams themselves. Spies coming in delegation and attending to the Imams, right? So you find this type of policy being adapted by the Bani Abbas in order to pressure the Imams. Now here, from one side you have this persecution, you have this sort of strange, very subtle way of, of, uh, of uh, undermining the Shia thought and at the same time killing of the Imams one after the other in a very young age. That's number one. The second is the weakness of the Bani Abbas as well. See, during the six year period of Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam, there were three Khulafai Abbasi being changed. You know, within the six year period, one came after the other. One was murdered, the other came. The second was murdered, the third came. The third was. So, within this period of span, you find three Khulafai Abbasi in six years. So, from one side, you have these pressures. From the other side, there's a weakness of the, of the Khulafai Abbasi at the same time. And because of this weakness, it provided the Imam to do the Imamat for six years. Because many a times the Khulafai Abbasi will say that, okay, take the Imam and do a trip and persecute him. 
they will take the Imam to persecute, all of a sudden they will get the news that the Khalifa have been killed. Then they will let go the Imam, you know. So, these type of pressures were there on the Imam. Now, finally it is coming to the point where they have heard the news of the twelfth one that who will basically the savior of mankind Imam al-Asr salam, who will establish justice. Now imagine this at a time uh, where Fir'aun was given the news that the new child will be born not given by the name of the family like Musa ibn Imran you know the Imran family will have a child whose name will be Musa and he will be the one who will overthrow Firon for example right no what it was said was that okay a child will be born the magicians have given or the fortune tellers have informed Firon that this will happen just this news which was there and he had no clue where, where exactly in which family in which tribe Right, exactly Hazrat Musa will be born, he started persecuting. He started killing every baby that was born, every lady that was pregnant. You know, the Quran is full of you know these reminders. So now you have this pressure by the Khalifa, meaning that by the Pharaoh, by the king upon to protect his kingdom. So the same way when they knew that the twelfth one will be the one who will establish justice who will conquer, who will rule. So automatically there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of pressure and particularly they were aware that it is from the lineage of the, of the Prophet Muhammad. It is from the lineage of, you know, these Imams who were believed one after the other. You know, from Imam Awwal, Imam Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam till Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. All of their names and they are well known and renowned an expert in deen, in piety, right, well recognized and they have following. And now here you have Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam, who is the father of this twelfth one. Obviously there will be an enormous amount of pressure on the Imam that this child be not born, for example, right. So now here with this sort of pressure, it is really miraculous that how the twelfth Imam was born. You know, a house arrest. Even Hakima Khatun, you know, the lady Hakima, who was the aunt of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam, she would say that, I don't see any signs. And what are you talking about, right? You know, someone who is that close in the house is saying that, I don't see any sign of labor, I don't see anything. But that happened. That happened. Physically it happened. It was, it was quite challenging for the Imam and the family of the Imam to really hide this. Not only just the birth of the Imam, but the upbringing of the Imam, how it was done in a very miraculous way, in a very challenging way, honestly. So now going back on to uh, where we have started in regards to that young lad who used to doubt in the Imams themselves. See, so far what I have I've said. From the time of Imam Raza alayhi salam, Shia Islam or Shias were recognized by the government of, uh, to the government level, meaning that Imam Rashid, you know, given the vicegerentship to Imam Raza alayhi salam. And it became official and number two, subtle uh, warfare was used to undermine and to pressure the Imams and eventually to take their lives, obviously. Like for example, you know, they will put a Tabib, a doctor, they will put a Qazi in the house of the Imam themselves that see, Imam died a natural death. And the Qazi of Muslims will be there, yes, it was natural death to bear witness, for example, right. And there will be, you know, uh, Jasus, there will be spies who will come and uh, suspicious sort of propagation news in regards to the Imam himself is being alive or not being alive like for example during the time of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam this uh, this subtle warfare which I'm saying this sort of warfare in a very f fine way like there were the, this clan who were known as Waqafiyyeh Waqafiyyeh 
they were saying that Imam Qazim is still alive and they would believe in the Imam. So we don't really need to believe in other Imams, for example. Right? So and they were very strong and they were promoted by you know by the agents, by perhaps by the Khalifa of that time, just to really undermine the Imamat. So in a very subtle warfare was going on. You know, as we see today, for example, you know, the the, the type of pressure, doubts being created, suspicious being laid in the minds of people, people coming to the Imam. I mean, this incident was, was recorded during the time of Imam Hassan Askari salam, and this was one of the incidents where Imam Hassan Askari salam, according to a riwayat, he became so upset that he would put a curtain when he would meet people, right? And, and, and what happened was that people came from Iran and brought loads of homes and charity and whatnot, because if you look at it, there is a lot of uh, lot of uh, financial support and mechanism being tailored by the Imam, by the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, by the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which requires for the Shias to be to stand on their feet to support themselves. I mean, if you look at most of the riwayat and support of Khums that we have is from Imam Jafar Sadiq salam. The reason because the Shias were persecuted during Imam Jafar Sadiq salam, and Imam in order to support the Shias, in order to sh support the Sayyids, the Sadat of that time, you know, came up with this phenomena of Khums of Sadat and same Imam and same Sadat. Because once they find out there is a Sayyid who is working, they would not give him a job. They will persecute them, right? So here you have the development of this financial support to give them that ground, that grounding have already started from the time of Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. So what I was trying to say that, that as Imam have mentioned that the amount of social pressure, the amount of test that the Shia went through during the Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam was enormous. So here comes people with the homes and they say, they ask the Imam that, tell us, where do you, what do you do with this money? They are asking the Imam, what are you doing to do with this? I mean, this homes, which is the haq of the Imam, the Shias, they have brought the money, they have brought the homes and they want to know that what the Imam is doing with this money. You know, as somebody have given an example, it's like when you are traveling in a plane, when you go inside the plane, you tell the pilot, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to fly? Right? And you should ask us in regards to, you know, which button to click and which button not button to do after explaining to us that what are you going to do with it? Right? So Imam, according to a version of Rivayat, which says that Imam put a curtain in front of Imam and the followers who would come to see them. Because he was so much, you know, uh, disappointed because of the suspicion, because of the pressure that was put on the Imams and particularly Imam Hassan Askari salam. So this soft warfare, this soft warfare was taking place during the time of the Imam Hassan Askari and how he managed to really participate and come and be victorious and present and preserve, preserve and present that thought of Imam al-Asr alayhi salam, protect Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam's life and you know eventually reached, make the tashayyo reach to the place where it has reached today, right? That was Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam. So what I was saying was that during the time of Imam Radha officially being recognized, soft warfare was started, waqifiye and promotion of these type of thoughts, promotion of ghulat who believe that the Imams to be God was also promoted. You know, people were promoting that because they wanted to make this Islam, uh, basically uh, attack Islam and make, uh, and also make, uh, you know, beliefs in the Imams as a perverted belief. They ghulat, they were known as a ghulat. They came into power, they were groups of people, they were, they were who considered the Imams to be the, uh, you know, uh, as, the, as God, right? It was during the time of Imam Hassan al-Skari So Imam is fighting this enormous amount of pressure, social pressure, political pressure, ideological pressure, 
physical pressure in the sense that you know he has to hide the birth of the 12th Imam uh, he has to face these challenges one prison to the other prison in this very young age right and guide all of them and at the same time you know there is this uh, fitna of the Quran that takes place then there is that story of that Christian uh, who were Christian priests were called from from Syria apparently uh, to make the dua to pray for rain and they came and people were becoming Christians at that time so Imam really uh, you know foil <coughs> you know the the the, the uh, what you call the uh, you know the uh, conspiracy uh, that was there which I'll mention that later on as well so here now this is what is the time of Imam Hassan Askari salam, from Imam Rida I was saying you know the amount of pressure building the Imams being becoming Shaheed very young the Imam going through uh, house arrest and put into prisons I mean look at it Imam Hassan Askari salam, one of his title is Askari which is barracks you know they sort of you know where there are army military place Askar you know which in Arabic means there's a there's a barrack town where you have army and military stationed there he was stationed in the middle of all of that because the 12th Mahdi alayhi salam ta'ala farajur sharif he will come and he will rule the world you know he will he will establish justice so you need all this military power to really if he does something strange so we can basically crush the, the, the crush him and be in power right so all of these things was happening in Imam Rada alayhi salam officially being recognized Imams being killed at a very young age Imams being in prison ideological pressure social pressure believing in that the physicalness of the Imam as well this young lad who comes from very far to really see Imam crowded streets when Imam comes out of his house to go visit the castle of the Khalifa to report that he's there right Imam comes out people were giving salams and looking at the Imam Imam stops at a young lad where this young lad has his doubt in his mind whether Imam Hassan Askari is alive he is there I want to see him physically and believe him that he is the Imam I want the proof from him so Imam stops there and he looks at it and he speaks to him by taking his name he was shocked and then he tells him about inquires about the mother who apparently was old and ill inquires about the other he was shocked one after the imam, other imam sort of engages this young man by informing him about his activity about who he is where he has come from right so he was really shocked and he says that yes you know I do believe that this is the imam of the time Imam Hassan Askari right and then they, after that Imam went the, the companions asked him are you satisfied now he said yes I'm satisfied only the first thing if he would have told me I would have satisfied but the little thing but Imam have shown so much you know, of miracles about the ilm ghaib which I mean imagine that Jafar e Khazab who was the brother of the Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam was put into prison along with the Imam imagine Jafar e Khazab who was you know the brother of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam after the shahadat of Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam managed the affair of the Imam as if claiming himself to the Imam and many believed him to be the Imam and brought so much of funds and homes and so on and so forth to the extent after during after a duration of time they say that oh this is Khazab you know this is not the Imam this can't be the Imam right where Jafar Khazab he himself goes to the Khalifa and he says that you know do something that I become the Imam after that I have that position which my brother have then the Khalifa says that it's not in my hand I'm trying to you know get rid of him myself perhaps it was a conspiracy of the Khalifa and the and the brother of the Imam eventually where Jafar Khazab was stationed in the prison to spy and at the same time to be close to the Imam and people outside will think that oh the brother is also prison together with the Imam so therefore they are very close to each other they've been persecuted and then eventually Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam's shahadat news is either sometimes is hidden 
you know when it reaches to different towns it was not like you know where we will send the text message and everybody will know about it so quickly no it was not like that one telephone phone call no by the time news reaches there many caravans have already left to really see the imam when they come to the imam for example they realize that this has happened or they will realize later on and then they will bring all their funds and they will start believing in Jafar al-Khazzab as the imam so it went through a lot of pressure and imam he himself have mentioned but imam managed to really maintain that that political thought that social thought that ideological that thought that spiritual re reality right you know you know imam was in prison and he was freed from from prison by the khalifa for a limited amount of time because there was a famine, there was drought and Christians, priests were called from Syria apparently to make dua because they have tried all means. There was drought, drought. no rain was coming. So they came and they raised their hands. As soon as they raised their hand, clouds were formed and rain came. Everybody was shocked. It rained so much that they say, Baba, enough right everybody was shocked then people started becoming christians converting to christianity right then they came to the imam the khalifa comes to the imam the khalifa is losing the power because they are you know becoming christians and he wants he's the khalifa of muslimin and they told the imam this is what's happening the Imam says, no, it's a conspiracy. Then Imam says, take me, call him again, call him again to do the dua. So the, the, he was called again. And then he said before that once he raised his hands, catch his hand and look inside what is in his fist. So he raises his hand, the clouds start to come. All of a sudden, the, you know, the soldiers who were there or who were appointed, they caught the hand and they opened it. It was a bone of a prophet in his hand. Imam put this bone in a cloth and he said, ask the, this Christian priest to really to do dua. He raised the hand, he does so much dua, nothing comes, no rain comes. So it was this bone and later on Imam asked him to respectfully bury that. So it was, you know, Imam kind of foiled this. Imam kind of, how shall I say, opened this. Uh, conspiracy that was there and it was affecting the Islamic Ummah of at that time right through this sort of uh, false uh, how shall I say false and a phony not true priest who were using these techniques not true Christians who are using these techniques but using wrong things in order to promote Christianity right in order to promote uh, Christianity they were using this wrong ways of doing so right and Imam kind of stopped them you see so therefore it is very important to examine the life of the Imam according to what was happening around them and how they managed to come out of this and today we are living in such a period we are living in a period where there's a lot of suspicion where there's a lot of social pressure where there's a lot of political pressure, where Islam, there's Islamophobia, right? But at the same time, you know, you would find that those who steadfast to the school of Ahl Bayt, they will come out in flying colors. You know, what's happening? Look at the fitna of Daesh, you know, how politically, you know, they were, uh, you know, trying to portray Islam to be that, right? They were trying to, you know, rule and conquer the lands in Syria and Iraq you know by the name of Islam by carrying out acts which are totally against Islam right right through terrorizing people but calling that to be Islamic but those who stood fast to the school of Ahl Bayt salam, they were the one who defeated them they were the one who you know kind of showed their their strength now how and where they do they get this strength from it is from that thought of imamat 
you know, of that leadership, of that acceptance of that leadership, of those appointees who represent the deen and religion, who are muttaqi, who are pious, right? That leadership. And they listen to that leadership and they carry out. And with that spiritual connection of theirs to the Imams, with that tawassul, with that energy of martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, right? You know, of sacrificing, of selflessness. Me, yes, I'm a young lad. I have a six-month-old baby, four-year-old baby. But for the protection of Hazrat Zainab, nothing. But for the protection of many children who are six months and four years, I will sacrifice myself. The mothers will say, I will sacrifice my children. The wives will say, I will sacrifice my husband. Right? This is how, you know, we have protected the harams of Ahl Bayt That leadership, that sacrifice during this soft warfare that is going on, where the haq and batil is so much mixed up, very difficult to really trace and find out because of the suspicions that are being created in regards to the Imam Zaman, in regards to the Shia thought, in regards to the leadership, in regards to that spirit of Imamat, right? Now, it eventually, after this sort of socio-political, returns back to that nafs insan where Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam says that, where Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam says that the journey to God will not be accomplished unless or until if that be the journey of night or the markab, meaning that the vehicle to really reach God is the layl is the night, through night prayers, through namaz e through ibadat, through worshipping, through tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That spirituality, that ruhaniyat, that manaviyat will protect us from all these bombardment of suspicion, of doubts, of you know, shaitan who are trying to really take our iman away. That manaviyat is needed. That ruhaniyat is needed. The alamat e mumin. Look how politically we have we were advanced during the time of Imam Hassan Askari salam, where he's saying that the alamat, the signs of mumin are five. He says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim loudly. It is Tashayyo who says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim loudly. Who do sajda on clay. Right? Who do sajda on clay? Who wears the ring of an aqiq? Uh, the sign of a moment. It is, al, it is a sign. It is a time where Imam is saying that now everybody should know. We do Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim loudly. We Shias are the one who wears the aqiq. We Shias are the one who do ziyarat arbaeen. Huh? Right? We are the one who pray 51 rakat of prayer. The mustahabbat. The salatul layl. Right? So these are the things that have protected this thought of ours, this ideology of ours, this iman of ours with that spirituality, with that manaviyat, with that manaviyat in one side and with that leadership, with that sort of imamat, with that leadership outside, that marjaiyat, those leaders who are sincerely striving and struggling. So therefore, there should be no doubt no doubt in our smanaviyat, in our spirituality, in God, in the Imams, in the namaz e shabha in the Ibadat, and no doubt in the leadership outside. No suspicion. People will try to create so many things in regards to this. So that the expansion and the extension and that sort of preservation and transformation of this thought till the Imam Mahdi alayhi salam returns should be weakened. See how it started from the time of Imam Rida alayhi salam up until now that we find. And if we go back 
bit more Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam the foundations were laid in regards to the knowledge in regards to the political and financial system being given to this great you know ideology that could provide so much betterment for humanity where it has answers for all insaniyat for all humanity right right so inshallah i give you tabrik and mubarak and greetings and felicitations upon this birth of our 11th imam the father of the 12th imam we give mubarak to the 12th imam as well and we ask the 12th imam that oh 12th imam today being the birth of the imam please have a special look give us a special sort of blessing and a smile and dua from your side to us as we are thanking you you know please fill our you know days to come especially now we are approaching you know new year 2018 this year to be a year of success of you know victory over our desires and shahwat and defeat of these evil you know uh, forces that exist and the reappearance of yours o 12th imam and our support to you inshallah may allah also you know we ask you o imam to have a special sort of dua for our marhumin who are not with us and who we have lost this year and the years before and the shuhada all of them may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase their daraja and mahshur them all and all with the ahli bayt alayhi salam inshallah والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته غفر الله لنا ولكم Thank you very much for watching us and we will see you next week again in question time. Thank you. Goodbye from now.